We keep showing how the kingdom of God is <clears throat> the kingdom of God is mentioned constantly throughout the gospels and is mentioned in relationship to a certain spirit or certain nature or as it were a certain government that is interior not exterior the government of the nature of the king um, wherever the king rules and I'm not talking about externally in whomever the king rules there you find the kingdom <clears throat> um, which by the way I understand Doug's on there with us <clears throat> folks need to keep Doug in prayer uh, he'll be coming back to the states again soon and he's going to need to find work and um, just a lot of things so be open to the Lord when you pray and Tony and Heather are with us I almost said and Tony and Heather and Kevin are with us they are but not together and then we have um, oh Alana is with us Alana, hello, hello, can you hear me in Ireland? <clears throat> All right, Matthew, what did I say, Matthew what? You guys are so good. Verse 2. This is Jesus speaking, that's why I have a red letter Bible. <clears throat> the kingdom of heaven is like a certain man who made a marriage for his son. <clears throat> All right, so here we go. But this, this is Jesus' explanation of the kingdom. He does this constantly, and yet he uses, you know, things that doesn't match the basic teaching that we get from many quarters on the true meaning of the kingdom. Uh, in fact, um, very much like the Beatitudes, that's, that talk about this blessedness. I mean, every one of the verses, blessed are the meek, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the <clears throat> merciful, blessed are the they that mourn. I mean, many of the things that it's saying brings blessedness is the exact opposite of what we think is going to bless us. You know, blessed are they that mourn, for you should be comforted. No, no, blessed are they that comforted. Do you see what I mean? And yet, it's because we don't understand the cross and we don't understand his nature, more importantly, because the, <clears throat> the cross in terms of two pieces of wood is explained by the nature of Christ. Do you understand what I mean by that? that, it, that the, it's just two pieces of wood. There are two guys on each side of him died on two pieces of wood too. What made his different? The spirit in which he was given. Okay, he was a sacrifice. <clears throat> All right. So um, this story goes on to tell of <clears throat> a man who uh, wanted to throw a, a feast for his son who was getting married and um, that <clears throat> a lot of people were, were invited and a lot of people didn't come. A lot of people didn't come and they made excuse and the excuse was always something that had to do with their life. Well, I've got this to do. Well, I've got that to do. Well, I've got this and I've got that and I can't come it's going to cost me to come it's going to cost me if I you know do this and so no <clears throat> so we could have read all that but since I've only got a few classes left you you may read it all the way down to verse 14 <clears throat> where it says many are thawed but few are frozen I'm sorry what did that say many are called but few are chosen <clears throat> all right so the kingdom is like a father who wanted people to join and commune with his son at a wedding, a wedding and a supper. But they looked at it as foolishness and pursued that which would increase them. And then it talks about, <clears throat> uh, what is it, verse? And they made, verse 5 says, But they made light of it and went their ways, went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants, servants, the spirit being carried by those who are working with the Lord, communing with the Lord. They took his servants and treated them shamefully 
and slew them. All right, so here we have <coughs> being crucified with Christ. Um, and they crucified the ones who brought the message. But the servants went out and they found, uh, and this is... Uh, the Lord saying, go therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. Verse 9, verse 10, so their servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. All right. <clears throat> uh, all this confuses us because most of our theology comes from... A a tree and it's not the cross <clears throat> it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil so we go what is he doing this can't be right you know god would never allow this there's something wrong some scribe did it wrong, wrote it wrong or something you know <clears throat> let me tell you with the lord gathering in uh to eat his his communion his broken body and his poured out life, where life is in the blood. <clears throat> uh, it doesn't matter who you are or what you did before that time, before you come to this feast, the feast of the Lamb, the marriage supper of the Lamb, joining to the Lamb as a bride, becoming one and like a vine to a branch, being filled with his life in us. <clears throat> doesn't matter to him. You know what shape you're in when you come what matters to him is that you eat of this feast and eating by eating of it you become partakers of the divine nature and what you were you no longer are because you are crucified with christ and christ begins to come forth in you and to manifest that kingdom but first there has to be a pursuit of that a desire to commune over that i mean communion i mean communion can be Communion could be any number of things. I mean, you think about it, the two main <clears throat> rituals or, or rites of the church, communion, water baptism. Both of them represent death. You know, his, this is my broken body. He didn't say, this is my New Testament raised up on fire, you know, spark gushing, you know, uh, body. But instead, he said, this is my broken body. Eat it. Put it on the inside of you. This is my poured out life here. Drink it and let it become part of you. <clears throat> All right. Water baptism represents death. Us going down into death, him coming up, raised unto newness of life. And that new life is Christ. <clears throat> so, the, you know, the only two things that were given to us to, to, for all of us to be involved in all, it all involves death. I mean, is that, you know, is that strange? Even when it's talking about doing remembrance of me, well, he's saying the remembrance of me who died and gave myself for you, and you remember this. Remember, take this into you. And it didn't say, take this into your brain. I mean, it didn't have to be a feast. It could have been a, a focus group or something, you know. He said, okay, remember this. Take this into your brain. He said, remember, do this in remembrance, take, eat. You see, that's more than just, let's, let's think about it. Yeah, he died. You know, that's what, really, that's what a lot of Christians do at communion. They just kind of go and think about, okay, ooh, ooh, he died for me. <laughs> and instead of seeing the one who died for you, he's telling you, put it inside of you. I don't know. Some of these things to me are just, they're simple. They're not as difficult as we make them. Go, well, what's the mystery of communion? Put the crucified one on the inside of you and let it be assimilated into your being so that he who died now continues the way that he is for others in you. <clears throat> um, so, um, and they crucified the ones who brought the message, but the servants found bad and good and lame, and they were willing to join in with the Father and the Son and, com and communed in the, what I wrote, they communed in the cross way. <clears throat> All right, let's go to chapter 23 and verse 13. <clears throat> All right, now this is, uh, this is, this stuff is really good. <laughs> 
You ought to take the time to go through all the Gospels with this kingdom thing in mind. Verse 13 of chapter 23, but this is Jesus speaking again, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Oh my God, people, this verse is explaining all that went before and all that comes after. I mean, it's not just Jesus on a rampage rebuking everything that gets in his way now. Well, he was pretty good, and he taught a pretty good message there on the Beatitudes, but now he's just upset. It's not that. That's not what's going on. Okay? And this is explaining it. But Jesus, <clears throat> but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither permit them that are entering in to go in. <clears throat> All right. So um, uh, the things, let's see. Let me make sure I've got, got all this in order. <clears throat> all right. So what he's doing is he is upset because the kingdom is not only... Um, <coughs> not presented it is being resisted and replaced by another kingdom and that that kingdom looks like this start in uh, <clears throat> let's say verse 4 for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders that they themselves <clears throat> uh, will not move them with one of their fingers so so you're beginning to get a picture of the kingdom of the rulers and the religious men and the priests and the, uh, this this kingdom of Israel as it were uh, at this point and it's just taking advantage of the power that they have and making it hard on other people and sort of laughing about it, if you will. All right, next verse. Uh, verse 5. But all their works they do to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. And this is, this is all decoration to make them look spiritual. Phylacteries were little things that hung down before their eyes and they had scriptures on them. And uh, the word of God says to keep... Keep, you know, the word before your eyes all the days of your life. So they make these little phylacteries and they go, we're doing it, we're spiritual, and we're keeping it, and we're so spiritual, and you people don't have phylacteries. You know, and Jesus is going, well, you don't have the Lord, you know. <clears throat> you know, and, and, uh, um, um, and all their works, all their works they do to be seen of men. Verse 6, and they love the uppermost places at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues. And they, again, and they love greetings in the marketplaces. And they love to be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be ye not called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. Okay. <clears throat> for one is. For one is your master. Don't call them rabbi. Well, because I'm your master. That's the way some people could read that. But the one who's saying I'm your master is the one who got down and washed their feet. He's the one that laid down his life for them. He's the one that gives himself constantly. You know. And then again, that's the point of communion that we come back to that, and we don't we don't just we don't just be blessed all the time. Just take care of me and do this and die for me and die again and die and all this kind of stuff so that I will prosper. But all of a sudden we say, you know what? I need to eat what you are. I need to eat your flesh and drink your blood and become your body and become the vehicle of this spirit and this nature. You know? And let it... Let the truth that is Jesus be the life that we live <clears throat> to get past just Jesus doing all this for us not that there's you know obviously there's nothing wrong with that but at some juncture you have to 
you know, I mean, it's like a little, it's like a little kid that they're getting all these presents and they just get more and more and more and all of a sudden present and they go, oh, can I get some more? You know, and you're going, you'll never even use half of this, you know? Well, give me even more and more and more. Somebody's turning into a monster. They were a brat, now they're a monster, you know what I mean? <clears throat> At some juncture you go, you know what, I have more toys than I need and, and you know, as it were, Jesus gave this to me. I want to give. Freely I have received. I want to give this back. I want to. I want to. But it's not I want to give. I want the beauty of your spirit, Lord, to be at work in me. I, I, I'm so sick of my selfish, ugly, self-centered ways that always think of myself first. I want you. So that when you say you want Jesus, you know specifically the Jesus that you want. You know? You don't just want his hand, you want his heart in you. <clears throat> All right, so, um, so the things listed, talking about what we've been reading here about, you know, they want to be seen and they want to, you know, they love uppermost places. The things listed are the opposite of what his kingdom is meant to be ruled by. They're ruled by selfishness. So remember in verse 13 now, he goes, he, this is the, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom. That's, the key here is not just what's being done wrong. It is the opposite of the kingdom, but it is being, repla it is replacing the kingdom and saying, this is the way you should work hard to work your way up the ladder to become somebody. Think of Paul, man. He was, he was doing that. He was, it says in Philippians in the actual uh, Greek there that he was out distancing all of his brethren. This was all of the people who were in, working to be Pharisees and to be great. He was out distancing all of them and, you know, really making progress. And then he met Jesus. And then he met Jesus. And he saw the futility of, I mean, <clears throat> what a lot of people don't realize is the higher you get in all this stuff, the more in, in trapped in everything it is, the more it begins to suck your time and everything. And uh, I remember, um, I remember that uh, when I worked for Denton State School a lot of years ago that um, I had this uh, job out there and um, and I, it was a really good job and really good pay and it was really a prestigious job and you know you sat in I sat in and did staffings with doctors and psychologists and uh, social workers and all the top people and everything <clears throat> Oh my God, it was like a millstone around my neck for being able to do anything for the Lord. So this other job came open and it was less pay, but it didn't demand so much so that I could be about my father's business when I needed to. And I said, I'll take it. And they said, you, you've got this, you, you know, um, all these credentials and all this you've got to this point and all this kind of stuff. You should be working your way up the ladder. And I said, I want to work my way down, you know. And that job was just like heaven because it gave me the opportunity that I could still serve the Lord. You know, Abraham lived in tents so that he could move when God told him to. It's a, it's a spirit, not a, I'm not telling you to go buy a tent. That's a spirit. You know what I mean? It's a spirit of something. It's a spirit of the way that you order your life because the Lord is more important than all this kind of stuff. Well, these guys were just the opposite. And Jesus is saying, look, You've made a kingdom, and you're calling it my kingdom, and it's the exact opposite. Woe unto you. You see? <clears throat> All right. Um, the Pharisees don't enter in the kingdom, and by their opposite ways shut up the kingdom to others. What ways? Ways that are opposed to the crucified because they promote themselves. Um, <clears throat> they put heavy burdens on the weak. Jesus bears our burdens. Uh, they do what they do to be seen of men. The kingdom teaching of that is when you pray, 
go into your closet and your father who sees in secret will, will be blessed. It's a, it's, but it's not, it's not a thing that you do. You have to have the, the spirit of the king. You have to have the heart of the crucified to do that or you won't even understand. You just go, oh, what's the devil? What, why don't I want to pray in a closet? You know, if I pray out here and, you know, in the church, if I stand up and go, oh, thus saith the Lord, and everybody goes, oh, you're such a man of God. You know? It's, it is um, presenting a false picture of what a man of God is supposed to be. Therefore, it's presenting a false picture of what the kingdom is meant to be. Therefore, it is presenting a false picture of the nature of the king, Jesus. Uh, they love the upper, not the lower seats. And I say that because I believe that there are people who will attempt to take the lower seat and they'll be really mad about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, you know, if they're not mad about the lower seat, they're mad that somebody in charge didn't say, come up here and, you know, and show all these people that you're really something special. He'd probably leave you there just to show you, just to get that stuff out so you could see what's really boiling on the inside of you. you know? <clears throat> My point is that there is, a, there is a spirit of the Lord that can so work in you that you will actually love the lower seat and it will be a cross to bear to take an upper seat. <laughs> Just chew on that one. Put that in your smoke and pipe it. <laughs> All right. Um, they love being respected and they love having titles. You go, well, what's wrong with that? Brother, you work hard, don't we? Oh, we love being respected. We love having titles. Oh. You know, we're, we're, we're siphoning off glory for ourselves. And we're trying to become something. You know, <clears throat> I, uh, you know, somebody said to me when I was in Bible school, they said, um, Boy, won't it be cool to be kings ruling, you know, in the millennium? Won't it be cool to be kings? I said, you know, I'd rather just sit at Jesus' feet. That's all I want to do. You know, when this is all, I just want to, I just want to be able to look up into his face. That's, that is my deepest heart's desire. I could care less about ruling. In fact, I don't want the burden of it, you know. <clears throat> um, the Messiah is your teacher, and he teaches you the way of the cross. Call none your master or Messiah, for Christ is your, and he'll teach you the way of the cross. <clears throat> um, and then verse 11 and 12 I have as the epitome of Philippians 2. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. <clears throat> uh, and then verse uh, 14, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you, you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense, Make long prayers. Therefore, you shall receive the greater damnation. I mean, what this is pointing out, folks, <clears throat> is this is pointing out what brought about the cross, the crucifixion of Christ. <clears throat> All of this <clears throat> arrogance and pride will look at a widow and say, okay, this poor woman doesn't have much and everything, but she's got this house, and we could use that house. <clears throat> and so all we got to do is make her feel like she's doing something for the kingdom of God. If you'll just give us your deed to your house, then 
and they take advantage of that and and in pretense pray so that people will think they're spiritual and all of that here's what I'm trying to say that little widow <coughs> that Jesus saw her put some money in not her her but her the widow saw her put some money in and said she's given out of her lack not out of her abundance that's the kingdom of God right there it is a spirit that is <coughs> the least and yet it dies and it lays down what it has and God brings forth something even greater than it could have been if she had lived you know you, you understand and so anytime you see the least, it may not use that word. It may be a widow. It may be children. It may be a beggar. It may be this or that. <clears throat> that represents Christ. And it even represents Christ in our lives, in our setting, in this way. <clears throat> if somebody came in here and they were rich and they had a lot of money, and this, by the way, I'm quoting scripture here. They came in here and they were rich and they had a lot of money and everything, and we showed special favor to them. Uh, somebody came in here and they were poor, like Big Steve or somebody like that, and we go, Ew, he stinks, he smells when he comes in here, he this or that or whatever. Let me tell you, I know, I know. <clears throat> but everybody does that to the least. They turn up their nose. Why would they turn up their nose? Oh, the smell. No, it's not just the smell. It's because you think you're better. Okay. But what if that was Jesus? See, I mean, Jesus came. He's the son of God, but he comes as a carpenter's son. He comes as the least. And the truth is, if we would do that to Big Steve, or we would do that to this person out there, we'd do it to Jesus because it's an attitude. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's a, it's a way that we carry ourselves. It's like, well, so that, so Jesus said, if you did it to the least, you did it to me because you would have done it to me. So I don't know your response to that, but my response is, oh God, help me, bring me <coughs> into your heart and your way that I may love unconditionally and without partiality. Okay, I know we're, I'm barely getting through one little thing here. Lord help us. Um, <clears throat> uh, verse 15, basically my note says, you're making disciples but in your own image and you make them even further from what I wanted. He called Jesus here was a little worse than me. He calls it threefold by child of hell than you are. <clears throat> but the idea being that you're, you're making these people into this kingdom of pride and arrogance instead of lowliness. And, and, uh, and when I say lowliness, I mean just self-giving, unpretentious for a pretense they pray. <clears throat> Uh, verse 16, they prize, uh, well, <laughs> my wording is good there. I need to read this. Woe unto you, ye, ye blind guides, who say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Okay, so the gold is more important than the habitation. I put, they prize metal more than the habitation of God. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> And uh, verse 18 through 20, and whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gift upon it, uh, he is bound, ye fools and blind, for which is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift. And whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it and by all things on it, because it's all one. It's the altar, the cross. You cannot separate Christ crucified. You cannot separate Christ the gift from the altar. You cannot separate. It is not, it is not come to Jesus. It is, you know, some people preach Christ. They preach a crossless Christ. And some people preach a Christless cross. They preach the cross. You need to die. You need to do it. You need, you need to give up stuff. You need to know Jesus in that. It's not the result of the life of Christ. It's the result of <clears throat> laying a cross on you. Well, that's one of the ones we've read. 
They laid, they laid burdens too heavy to be borne and will not lift one finger uh, to help you. <clears throat> so I wrote, the altar and the sacrifice are one and no lamb is accepted except on an off, off <clears throat> no lamb is accepted except an offered one. There's no virtue, folks, in lamb. The lamb that's worshipped is the slain lamb. You do realize that, don't you? <clears throat> so the altar and the sacrifice are one, and no lamb is accepted except an offered one. The rest of this chapter is Jesus' um, words against things ruled by another kingdom. <clears throat> um. Some people read the Gospels, they read Matthew, and they read the, they read the <clears throat> Beatitudes, and they say, oh, how wonderful. And they get down here to chapter 23, and they see Jesus apparently ranting uh, against something. But when he went in to that temple, he drove out the money changers. This was not a rant in him. This was, from his heart and view, everything that was made, even though it was a shadow, is a shadow of something that's holy. And when I say holy, sacred. Sacred to him, to God. This temple represents my father's habitation. It is meant be inhabited by that which demonstrates that kingdom. He goes in there, <clears throat> there's doves, Holy Spirit, but, but it's not, it's, it's representative. There's lambs, Jesus. <clears throat> he goes in there and flips over the tables, turns everything out, chases them out, chases them out of there. Well, as one brother said to me some time back, see, Jesus wasn't always a lamb. So we're not supposed to always be a lamb. <clears throat> Would you believe I didn't even try to explain? <laughs> I didn't say a word. I just went, okay, yeah. However you want to see it. Jesus... A zeal that the temple, us, would be filled with the Father's heart and the Father's way. That it would be a manifest, a manifestor. The temple would be a place of manifestation for something that they hold as sacred. And it is sacred because it's the essence of God. The spirit of selflessness. It's the essence of God. Oh, it's it's undeniably sacred. <clears throat> but it's not just that. It's not just this isn't that. This has a lamb and a dove and, a, and they're selling it for their own gain and they know that these people coming in have to have sacrifices and whatever and they're jacking up the prices so that they can get more money and so... They're doing all of this stuff. And Jesus called it a house of merchandise. That you, that this is all set up for one reason. Your gain, your promotion, your best interest. To heck with them coming in. You know, who cares if this guy doesn't have enough money, you know, to do this. This is the price. You either pay it. Or you're in trouble with God because you didn't offer your offering today. Everything <coughs> evil behind it, and yet you, how would you know that? How would you know that that's evil if you're raised in it? You wouldn't. You wouldn't know that. It, you would go, you know, oh God, I'm sorry. I, I must have done something wrong that I don't have enough money to buy even a, a turtle dove, uh, even a pigeon even a, a dove just to offer you that which was the cheapest version of it. 
I don't even have that much, and you know, and guilt and everything. And I am so bad because I, you know, I should have foreseen all of this and lay the guilt on him and go borrow some money from your friend or you're going to be in trouble with God. So now they put him in debt. All right. <clears throat> that's just a, that's, that's a picture that's going on around us every day. There's nothing new about that. There's nothing new about that. There isn't. That is going on in, and I'm, you know, okay, I already get in trouble. I might as well say something to get in trouble over, really, instead of, you know, there are churches, folks, that are just, that's it. They live to take advantage of the people so that they can, and what they do is they say, well, if you'd be like us, you would have all that we have. You know, the problem, your problem is you don't have faith. And I'm just going at one angle. Trust me, there are a bunch of other angles. That's, I'm not picking on one particular, but I sort of came out of that one, so I know what it's like. But it's, it's, <clears throat> it is taking advantage of people for their own gain, and the people are freely, and I know that, I mean, my, my own mother lived at home when I was going off to the mission field, didn't have hardly any money. But that woman faithfully gave to a certain ministry because this is the way that they did her. Okay. So I sat her down and talked to her. I said, Mom, if you're going to give to that, here's the way I want you to do it. And I talked to her about the Spirit of Christ, not about gaining and believing you're pleasing God because you're giving up nothing. And, and my mom was precious. She really did love the Lord. And she heard it and she went, and I didn't rob her of giving, even though she didn't have hardly anything. If you ever saw my mom, you'd know that this was a hardship for her to, to do this. She ended up doing it in the sweetest spirit of Christ. In the sweetest spirit of Christ. It was so precious. And I was so proud of her. And I didn't, you know, I didn't feel like I had to say, you know, those people are evil. Don't give to that. You're giving to a whorehouse or something. You know what I mean? Just trying to. You know, I, you, that's not the, even the goal. The goal is Christ, amen? That's where we're after, you know? Jesus said, if I be lifted up, and he's talking about the cross, if I be lifted up, men will be drawn to me, not to us. People say, why don't you have more people here? Because we lift up Christ crucified. <laughs> And they're drawn to him, and, and I'm happy with wherever they end up as long as they're with him. I'm okay with it. I really am. I'm totally okay with it. And, you know, um, you know, Jason just left. By Monday, Nisi will be gone. Uh, ben and Cassie are going to be moving to Arizona. They've made that announcement. We're getting smaller and smaller, and people still say to me, you know, Man, what are we going to do? We're going to live for Jesus. We're going to live with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our strength and all of our might. And we're not going to number the people, you know. We're not going to number the people. Another brother said to me once, he said, you, he said, he said, why don't you have more people? I said, well, you know, we're not interested in numbers. He said, well, God is. He's got a whole book called the Book of Numbers. <laughs> Some of you already heard this, so you know what I said, right? I said to him, have you ever read the Book of Numbers? The whole thing is about reducing the numbers because they sin and then he wipes them out or they, you know, <laughs> this, and it just, it's not adding numbers. He's taking away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's interested in, in what I said to him was quality, not quantity. All right. I am, I am uh, running down a little bit with sadness because I really thought I was going to get further than this with only a few classes left. But it is the way of new creation. <laughs> and more specifically, the way of Randy Nussbaum. But you know, just like all this 
extra talking I've done in this class knowing that it was going to end. <clears throat> you know, I try to hear from God. I mean, I do. I, even when I have things from God, the Holy Spirit, you know, God gave me this. This is about Christ. But the Holy Spirit must have the right to intervene anytime he wants to because there are particulars. It's not, okay, this is a body of truth, but there are particulars, maybe it's particulars of our life. Maybe it's some body particularly here that he wants to speak to and bring something up. And, um, and I've learned that even my dumb, foolish jokes or whatever, that God can use those things. He is at work and he is bringing us more and more to Christ. And sometimes there are certain things that have to be said that may be known by the majority, but not known by all. And they, we all, t you know, it's, you know, uh, again, a long time ago, somebody said, well, you know, Randy, this flock could go a lot faster. You know, it seems like you're going at a slow pace, you know. And I said, we are, we are only as fast as the slowest sheep. We're all together. We're all in this together. We're seeking the Lord together. The Lord put us together. And so, you know, if you've heard this, if you've heard something a hundred times, somebody got it for the first time. And my heart is with us, not even with them, with us. But sometimes in your spirit or in your teaching, you have to leave the 99 and you have to go minister as it were to that one and bring them in to what the 99 have to that point you know we're only as fast as the slowest sheep and i just believe with all my heart <clears throat> that if our pace is the lord and i believe our pace is the lord if our pace is the lord and if our hearts are genuinely set on jesus and we're and it's not about the religious view that anybody has, including mine, it's a heart set on Jesus, that we will find the Lord in ways that you never could believe. That there is treasure. There is treasure to be found. There is so much treasure to be found. And the Holy Spirit is here. And he's in you. And he's here. And he's, he, he is you might think I'm crazy to say he is ecstatic to know he's got people he can talk to. Not just during church. But because your heart is there. And, you know, maybe he can't flood you yet because, you know, it's he's priming the pump. You know what I mean? He's priming the pump. And I don't know if you've ever seen one of those old pumps, but I, I've worked a few in my day and they're rusty and metallic and you have to pour something to prime it and you pump it and you, you got to pump as fast and hard as you can and then all of a sudden you know at first it's just a little bit of water spurting out and it's all rusty and yucky and, da -da -da -da. and once you get going it just it'll break loose the lord's for the for some of you that you're not just flowing he's priming your pump and he knows what you need and as an under shepherd Ooh, I think I really think we're on the right track. <laughs> I mean, really, I do. I think our, our I think our hearts are set, and I think He wants to pick up the pace a little bit. But that's His business. So I'm asking all of you to just, uh, and of course, this isn't the end of this course, but it is the end of this class tonight. I'm asking you to all. <laughs> Trust the Lord. Trust that he is guiding you and that his hand is upon you and that, that it's not just upon you, but he's added you to something that will help you move faster and to move. And, and the goal isn't fast, but I mean to move because you, you'll gain more. Your life is only so long. And you might think you're going to live forever. It's only so long. And so it's not a faster pace just to be faster. It is to meet his pace. That's what it said of Enoch. He walked with God. That means he's walking at his pace. Only the Lord can bring you into that. And the beauty of that, once you hit his pace, instead of him slowing him down to your pace, then you are not. That's what it says of Enoch. He walked with God and was not. <laughs> because now he's just with the Lord.
We're just taken into the Lord. So anyway, I love you guys. Let me, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for all that are here and all that are on Skype and all that will listen to this later. <clears throat> I thank you for your sweet grace and blessed mercy that is ours through Calvary and is ours because of you and the way that you love. I sense your hand to keep us and to guide us and to uh, bring us, as, as your spirit said through my lips, bring us into treasure that we've not yet seen of Jesus. The treasure that is not just in heaven, but is in our earthen vessels of more fullness of Christ in his selfless ways so that we may be living sacrifices, living sacrifices, all of us together, not individually, not trudging along individually, but together in your pace, kept by you, held on by one another. We ask you to continue to, to uh, lead us, Good Shepherd, guide us to that that altar in Jesus name Amen alright we're dismissed